welcome everyone. So today we're going to talk about good clinical practice for medical devices. And we'll look at some of the key differences in ICH E6 GCP and ISO 14155. Now, ICH E6 GCP was just updated in November of 2016. Are you guys familiar with that? Give me a green check, please, if you are, or a red X if you're not, because we've been sending that out to people who may not be aware. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks. So we saw those updates in November. And interestingly enough, some of the changes more closely aligned ICH to ISO 14155. Now ISO 14155 is, is a uh, licensed product. You have to purchase it. We are, gonna, we are going to give some information for comparison and contrast. Obviously, we're not going to be able to share all of that document with you. What we'll be talking about today in the hour and a half that we have is the purpose and the governing bodies behind ISO and ICH. We'll look at the core principles of each document. We'll look at some of the key differences and similarities between them. As we said, ICH moved a little bit more to what we have seen in ISO. And we'll look for additional sources of information um, about where we can ensure or gather information for guidance for compliant conduct and oversight of studies using medical devices. So ISO is a worldwide federation of national standards bodies. So the U.S. is part of, of that. It's an ISO member. We uh, adopted ISO 14155 in 2001, or 2011, sorry. It was split into parts one and two uh, prior to that and served for, for several years in, in that format. Consolidated, updated a bit in 2011, and adopted as a global standard on clinical investigation of medical devices. So we still see in protocols for IDE studies where we're going to follow good clinical practice, we're going to follow ICG-6, as well as ISO. And they're complementary. So say you're running an IDE study, you're going to follow 21 CFR 812, and then many folks are also layering in ICG-6 and ISO. So the title of ISO 14155 is Clinical Investigation of Medical Devices for Human Subjects, Good Clinical Practice. So what we see in this are some responsibilities that flesh out some of the areas that we want to focus on when we are developing and conducting and overseeing those studies. So it looks at good clinical practice for designing, conducting, recording, and reporting clinical investigations carried out in a human population to assess the safety or performance of medical devices for regulatory purposes. So you'll see that some of the wording is very similar to what we see in ICH E6 GCP, which of course is written for pharmaceuticals. What we're looking for are having standards for how we can use you know, scientific and ethical standards for how we engage that human subject population for studying those investigational medical devices. So the general requirements of ISO 14155 are to protect the right safety and well-being of human subjects, ensure the scientific conduct of that clinical investigation, as well as the credibility of the clinical investigation results. So that's very similar, obviously, to what we see in ICH E6 GCP. But we want to point out that regardless of your type of investigational product or therapeutic area, the purpose of, or the product really, of good clinical practice is that good data from protected subjects. So we define the responsibilities of the sponsor and the principal investigator in ISO. So it outlines things that are outside of what we see in the regulations and in the ICH guidance, which we'll get into some greater detail here. It is a tool for sponsors, investigators, ethics committees, regulatory authorities, as well as other bodies that are involved in assessing the conformity of medical devices with of medical device research with the, the ethics and, and the scientific standards that govern that conduct and oversight. So ethical investigations, ethical considerations, clinical investigations shall be conducted in accordance with the ethical principles that have their origin in the Declaration of Helsinki, which is exactly what we see in ICH. The principles protect the right, safety, and well-being of subjects. These are the most important considerations and shall prevail over the interests of science and society. Also one of those 13 principles that we see in ICH E6. These principles shall be understood, observed, and applied at every step of the clinical investigation. So what we see as that 13th principle in ICH is that systems that ensure quality in every aspect of the trial should be implemented 
we're now pulling this back out saying not only do you need to have these systems in place, you need to make sure people comprehend. And you need to make sure that things are followed so you have comprehension and compliance as part of your conduct. So we'll be looking for, you know, if we come out and audit and you say you're following ISO 14155, we'll be looking for, okay, did you establish upfront what you were going to be doing? Did you train people? Did you assess people against that for compliance? Was that integrated into your review, not just of a performance evaluation, but in that work product? 